A broad-tailed hummingbird is gathering minute insects with multiple jabs of its tiny tongue, dodging wind and water with precision far beyond the imagination of any aircraft pilot, delivering food to a youngster half-flown and half-fallen from its nest in a parking lot. A parking lot located in a town sharing a border with a national park. We call these buffer zones, areas where transitions lead to this natural and protected place. A baby ringneck duck is beginning its life adventure at the edge of this buffer zone. A great horned owl chooses to raise her chicks on a rock ledge in town, while this tiny but aggressive pygmy owl chooses the national park. From park to buffer to development, we are in what we call a greater biosphere. In short, this national park cannot exist as an island. It is physically impossible. With conflicts and contradictions, neither the wild nor the developed can be contained. Every national park lives under the influence of a somewhat vaguely defined biosphere. So here where people shop, an introduction to the wilderness literally flows into town, complete with rocks, rapids, trout, and hummingbirds, and a resident mink. Sufficiently nourished, this delicate urban aviator has survived a perilous event, an event gone unnoticed next door in a local coffee shop where discussion is often cultivating the imperfect phrase, loving it to death. Some say they and some say we are the ones loving it to death. The they referring to the over four million tourists pouring through Estes Park and into Rocky Mountain National Park annually and the we as all of us. All of us who are guests, tenants and caretakers of a biosphere with a national park.